Hi there, Chakra Kid. The adults in your life love you so much, and that's why they sent you here. They want you to discover all of the magic in the universe, but sometimes they have a hard time explaining it to you. So they sent me to show you the way. Think of me as your mystic guide. I'll not only help you discover the tools you'll need to navigate your path, but also when and how to use them. I'm Carly, a licensed intuitive therapist and magical wizard that helps kids like you connect to your inner power, listen to your heart, and share your voice so you can grow up living the life of your dreams. So grab your favorite snack and get cozy. Invite your grown-up to share in the fun because mystical, magical adventures are about to begin. Hello and welcome back to the Chakra Talk podcast. So today I'm going to be sharing with you all about chakras. I figure if I have a podcast that's called Chakra Talk, that's one of the first things I should share with you, isn't it? Especially because when I learned about the chakra system, the modern chakra system, I absolutely fell in love with it. I learned about it when I was taking my very first yoga training many years ago, and this is something I absolutely would have loved to have known about when I was younger. It's the perfect way to empower yourself and to connect those areas of mind, body, and spirit that we've been talking about. Now, imagine if you had a map to your very best self, one that you could follow to help you find balance and happiness in all areas of your life. Well, you do, and that map is the chakra system. The blueprint exists inside you and inside of all of us. You may have felt your different chakras and not known that that's what they were. So like when you've had butterflies in your stomach, when you feel nervous, or your throat feels tight before you need to speak in front of people, those are your energy centers being activated. Okay, so what are chakras? Chakra is the Sanskrit word and it means wheel or circle. It's actually pronounced chakra, but in the West we often say chakra. In ancient India, yogis were the first to define the chakras as energy centers that are located along the spine. They considered the chakras to be subtle energy system, and that means that it's something you can't see or you can't touch, but it's where energy flows. And the yogis believed that these energy centers became blocked when you had, when they experienced life challenges or samskaras. And that made it so their energy couldn't move freely throughout their body and create that feeling of wellness and balance when you're really connected to your true self. So imagine like a bicycle with all the different gears that work together to help move the wheels. And if one of the gears is stuck, then the others won't be able to move either. And you're not going to really go anywhere. Or sometimes I like to imagine a river with big rocks in it that are slowing down the flow of the water and it can't move freely downstream. So if there's too many obstacles in the way, the water will be stuck. And if you move them, then things will be able to flow more easily and fluidly. So they did daily practices of meditating and visualizing each one of these symbols. There was a symbol associated with each chakra and they imagined them along their spine and they chanted a special mantra and a special sound that was associated with each one. And the yogis believed that the sound could dissolve those knots of energy with sonic power. So imagine it coming in there, kind of blasting it through, and then there's a clear pathway. So their life energy could flow freely through the chakras, up and down their spine, and then all throughout their body. And with that energy moving freely, they could connect with their highest self, their true best self, and live in the world from that place of connection. So even though the first evidence of chakra system existed, was found to be in India, there's different kinds of chakra and other energy systems that have been found all over the world with varying numbers, different locations in the body, across all different countries, cultures, religions, and time. Today's chakra system, the modern chakra system, was influenced by all of these different cultures across thousands and thousands of years. And initially, the chakras were just associated with energy and spirit. It was all about clearing energy and having energy move freely through your body. And there wasn't any connection with different areas of your life like you'll learn today. 
So it wasn't until the early 1900s where many Westerners had a chance to learn about the chakra system through this book called Serpent Power, where the author had translated one of those ancient yogic texts into English, so now people in the Western culture had access to it. One psychologist, Carl Jung, he's largely connected with bringing the modern chakra system to life. When he read this book and learned about the chakra system, he was excited, or I imagine him being very excited, since there was nothing like it in Western culture that he had experienced. It gave him a new way to frame psychology or the study of human behavior. He saw it as a ladder to your best self, and he connected different psychology ideas and concepts to each chakra, depending on where the chakra was located in the body. So, for example, the root chakra was connected with feeling grounded and having what you need to survive in life because it was located at the root and the base of your spine. The heart chakra was connected with love, and the throat chakra was connected with communication. So the modern chakra system that we know today is really a fusion of Eastern and Western ideas, and it's evolved to include mind, body, and spirit. Along the way, different therapists and healers and energy workers would add their own interpretations to the system and made connections with our organs and our glands. The most commonly known chakra system and the one I'll be talking about today is the seven chakra system and it has corresponding rainbow colors with it. Rainbow colors were also something new that was added in the late 70s by people who had studied color therapy and they associated each one of the chakras with the color of the rainbow. So the rainbow colors being associated with it is not traditional at all. It's actually really modern and quite a new addition, but it's something that I love. I think it makes chakras easier to understand. It makes it fun and colorful. Today, millions of people across the world use the chakra system as a roadmap or a framework for health and healing. And you can see chakras associated with just about everything once you start looking Crystals, foods, flowers, essential oils, planets, even days of the week, animals, astrology signs, all different kinds of jewelry, and everything has the similar goal to support wellness and balance in your mind's body and spirit. So how can chakras help you? When you understand the chakra system, it's like having a compass where you know how to direct your attention and then what tools and strategies are going to help you come back into balance. It's a way to balance your energy and bring balance to all different areas of your life. And as I had shared before, when you have different challenges or conflicts that happen in life, the flow of your mind can get blocked in one or more of the chakras or one or more of the energy centers, one or more areas of your life. It can cause you to feel out of balance and have negative emotions. And when the energy is flowing freely and things are in balance in all different areas of your life, you feel good and you can see the best in yourself. You may be able to focus on the positive. You are able to focus on the positive, even if nothing else around you has has changed, when you feel internally in balance and connected to your true self, then you're able to see the world from that positive space as well. Now, even though the early ancient yogis balanced their chakras mostly by meditating, visualizing, chanting, and also doing uh, yoga poses at some point, you can balance your chakras in all different kinds of ways, and there's endless options for you to explore. And just like you, your toolkit for what tools and strategies are going to help you balance your chakras are going to be unique to you. And it's fun. It can be a fun exploration to figure that out. You can use movement, you can use meditation, reflection, positive affirmations, any of the tools that I shared before, all different kinds of activities, and they're all meant to promote a healthy feeling of balance and wellness and happiness in your body and in your life. Now, you might be wondering, okay, how does this all work? So everything in life is vibration, and that's actually a quote from Albert Einstein. So when you connect with things that share a similar vibration and energy as the way that you want to feel, when you connect with them, they can help you come into that similar vibration and help you balance that particular chakra area. So you'll start to align your energy with the qualities of these different things that you're interacting with or these different intentions that you're interacting with, different tools, and it will help you bring those qualities into your inner world and also into your mind and your physical body. 
For example, when you connect with the color yellow or something that symbolizes fire or the sun, then that can help you feel energized and bring that kind of fiery energy into your mind and body. And that will also balance your solar plexus chakra which is right in the core of your belly. Now, I'm going to share episodes with you at some point soon that go into each one of the seven chakras so you can learn even more about them and the tools to balance them and the different chakra kits that I've created that are connected with them. But I want to share a short introduction of each of them here with you now so you can get a sense of the whole system. The root chakra is related to the color red and the qualities of trust, safety, security, and belonging, and it's located at the base of the spine. So you may want to balance your root chakra when you're feeling afraid or you're just starting something new or you want to feel at home wherever you are. So you might choose to ground yourself with a root chakra practice like child's pose in yoga or cuddling up in your favorite blanket or connecting with one of your favorite family members. The sacral chakra is related to the color orange and the qualities of creativity, fun, play, and joy, and it's located in the pelvis. So if you're feeling worried or if you have trouble with change, you want to get in the flow with a chakra practice like spending time in water or dancing, moving your hips, something that connects you with the feeling of fun and joy. The solar plexus chakra, as I had mentioned, is related to the color yellow, and that's connected with qualities of confidence and power and strength and resilience, being able to pick back up and start again once things have you've made a mistake or you failed at something, and that's located in the upper belly. So if you're feeling self-doubt or you're working towards a goal or you want to empower yourself, you could benefit from balancing your solar plexus chakra. You might go for a run or you could stand in that superhero pose. Um, It's also good to work with smells or oils of citrus or even have some lemonade. Next up is the heart chakra, and that is connected to the color green. It's also sometimes connected with the color pink or gold, so kind of going out of that rainbow uh, feel, but it really is whatever you connect with the most. And the heart chakra is located right in the heart center and connected with qualities of love and kindness, compassion, and gratitude. Sometimes you might want to balance your heart chakra is if you're dealing with low self-esteem or you're having a hard time forgiving someone or forgiving yourself for making a mistake. You can bring more love and kindness into your life by balancing your heart chakra. One of the things I like to do most to balance my heart chakra is you can write a list of what you love about yourself or someone you care about or make a gift for somebody. The throat chakra is related to the color blue and qualities of truth, communication, listening, and self-expression. And you may have guessed that it is located right in the center of your throat. And if you need some bravery to share your opinions, or maybe you have a speech or some performance coming up where you'll be in front of a bunch of people, you can build your courage by balancing and strengthening your throat chakra with a practice like listening to music or using your voice to sing your favorite song out loud. The third eye chakra is related to the color indigo and qualities of intuition and mindfulness, being present, inner peace, and wisdom. It's located right in between the eyebrows. And if your mind is full of thoughts or if you want to tune out the opinions of other people, you can calm your mind by balancing your third eye chakra. Something simple like taking a few deep breaths or doing a short meditation like the happy place meditation that you can find on my YouTube channel can help. And then we tie things all together with the crown chakra and that's located at the top of your head and it's related to the color purple or violet and the qualities of imagination, dreams, unity, and connection. Some good times to balance your crown chakra is if you're feeling lonely or you're confused about the future. It can help you to connect with what's possible by doing a crown chakra practice like daydreaming or dressing up in your favorite fantasy costume. Now, when you know what tools you need to solve your daily challenges and without having to randomly choose 
and go through all of your different strategy every time, or sometimes worse, thinking that there's something wrong with you, that you think you're trying different things and they don't work, that is one of the greatest benefits of the chakra system and one of the things I love so much about it. And as I shared before, your perfect chakra balancing toolkit is going to be unique just like you. It's all about exploring and discovering what fits best. Now, I love the chakras so much that I created characters out of them, and it's a really fun way to get to know your chakras with the chakra kids. Each chakra kid embodies the characteristics of one of the seven chakras, their names, their personalities, their superpowers, their clothing, their spirit animal, the colors, how they help you and what their lesson to share is. They're all inspired by that specific chakra that they represent. So when you learn about them, you're also learning how to balance your chakras at the same time. So I'm going to share some links in the show notes for you so you can learn more about the Chakra Kids and also a link to a free coloring page that shows you the one of the Chakra Goddesses, one of the Chakra Kids Goddesses and the locations of the chakras, the names, and also a positive affirmation that you can use to help balance that chakra. And whenever you're ready for more, you can join Camp Chakra Kids and hang out with them, the Chakra Kids, for some chakra balancing fun. And they will help you make every day an adventure in happiness. And I will see you here next episode where I'll be talking about crystals and how you can use crystals to balance your chakras, to balance your emotions, and to just attract more of what you want into your life. Did you feel the magic? I sure did. If you had fun on this adventure, ask a grown-up to connect with me on my website, innerrainbowproject.com. When they join my email list, I'll send you a free guide of lots of fun chakra balancing ideas to explore. And if you love this episode, I'd be so grateful if you leave a review, because that helps spread the magic to others. Let's continue this journey to happiness together.